Okay, child. So you know when you see this video that we're getting ready to go live, there's breaking news somewhere, okay? Like, what do these people do with their lives all day? Just sit around and just cause trouble and mess and then they want me to talk about it? Yep. Okay, so click the link below. Um, there's a link for my Patreon to join the Texas community as well as to purchase my book, Triumph Over Adversity, Overcoming the Church Road, okay? Now get ready. Buckle up your seatbelt. It's time to go. Hey, what's going on, Cocktails? Happy Monday to each and every one of you all. Look, we're going to talk today about Bishop Noel Jones and Stacey Francis. But before we do, we're going to read this clause, all right? Please note that everything discussed on this podcast is alleged, all right? So y'all know y'all got that part, right? I'm a blogger, not a journalist. This video is for entertainment purposes only. So what's up? Happy Monday to each and every one of you all. Hope that you guys are having a fantastic day, all right? And I hope to not be on here long, okay? Hopefully, hey, Kai Grace, hopefully we're going to be on, we're going to be on for a minute and then off, all right? But of course, as you all know, that the, the news has been breaking all weekend. Personally, let me tell y'all what I was doing on, on uh, what was it, Saturday. Okay, so I'm minding my business, right? I, actually, I had like a little wild, crazy Friday night, right? And, um, you know, doing something I should not be doing. I had been way too grown, okay? I had to sit myself down and call my niece pup on Saturday like Madison. I promised that I was going to do this right on, uh, for 2023. Auntie's going to do better. <laughs> and she side-eyed me and did not believe anything that I said, okay, at all. So anyway, so... The news broke, allegedly, right, that a uh, world-renowned, internationally known bishop in the Lord's Church, Noel Jones. Now, I didn't know this. I'm going to tell you the truth. I did not know this at all. I did not know this at all. I promise you I did not know. And I'm so glad I didn't because it gave me, like, a different, a different vantage point for the bishop. Okay? Shout out to my new subscribers, by the way, too. So I said, what's going on with the bitch? Like, why is the news breaking today when I'm up here laid up? Okay, head hurting. Let's look at a mess. Okay, I was, I was, I did not look this nice on Saturday. I was looking at a hot whole mess. And then I was on watching uh, Pam's uh, broadcast because catching up on the whole Bishop White. Listen, I can't, the whole Bishop Whitehead situation is so convoluted. And I posted in my Patreon an update about him this morning. So I hope that you got it. Hey, Ms. Jackson, I hope that you all got it. Okay? To my patrons. So I'm up here, and I am struggle responding on uh, YouTube. I'm like, like literally, eyes have open. It was a mess. It was a mess, y'all. So let me just tell you all this. I did not know that... Bishop Noel Jones, allegedly, allegedly, we're going to start early, child, and the breaking news is breaking, that he, now, I didn't, okay, so, of course, I know that he's a, he was an older gentleman when he was on The Preachers. That came out in 2013. I have my notes here, too, and my good reading glasses today, okay? These are my real reading glasses, y'all. Not the fashionable ones. These are the real ones, and I have notes for today. I did not, I had no clue that the bishop was married before had no clue that he had children, but he was an older guy. So, of course, he probably had a life before ministering or during ministry, okay? But I didn't know all the particulars, all the details. I just knew that he was a Jamaican bishop, okay? And he was on a TV show. That's how I really found out about Bishop Noel Jones. So, y'all forgive me for not knowing all the ins and outs about how people got started. I don't know any of that. And I'm glad that I don't. Sidebar, oh, sidebar, really quickly. Shout out to, there is a pastor that I want to say congratulations on her third year anniversary, Pastor Anika Wilson-Brown from Union Temple Baptist Church in Washington, D.C. One of my friends goes there and they had a great weekend. I was uh, watching from the bushes, okay? I was watching from the bushes. But shout out to that woman of God that is doing an awesome job. She has some very prolific speakers over the weekend too, y'all. Mm -hmm. One of them, 
we might we might slip him in a little piece. But uh, Iyala Von Zant was one of her pre one of her speakers for the morning, and Jamal Bryant was in the evening. Y'all li listen. So anyway, we're gonna talk about that later. But shout out to Pastor Anika Wilson Brown, carrying on the legacy of her father. Um, I believe his name was I forgot what his name. I don't want to say I know, but I don't. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm so disappointed. No, well, let's talk about it, y'all. So allegedly, Bishop Noel Jones, unbeknownst to me. Now they said when I went to the, to the Google today, the Google told me that he has three children. The Google lied. Okay, somebody needs to update the Google. Breaking news. Breaking news. Somebody needs to update Google. Okay, because the Google is currently lying. The Google, the Google is not telling the truth. No. The Google should say he has three grown tail children and a minor. <laughs> so anyway, so I remember Bishop Noel Jones. I found out about him doing the preachers. And I really loved that show. Maybe because I was in the church at the time and I was just really the Google lot. The Google lot. I was really into the show. I was into the church. I was in ministry. Like anything that had something to do with God and ministry. I was like, yes, I want to watch this. I want to see what the preachers are doing. I'm going to meet you. One of the preachers that was in, I think it was in Atlanta. He was he was smoking cigars and carrying on. And I was like, you going to smoke it with some bourbon too? But anyway. So let's go back to my notes, Shad, because we're going to go through a timeline. Okay. And, and when I get to the end, I have this on the back page. So we're going to call out. We're not going to call it out in a bad way, but I want to talk to the women of God. I'm talking about the first ladies of the church. Yeah, that would be uh, Lady Loretta because, you know, she's so beautiful too, by the way. Oof. But also Lady Omer, Bishop uh, Kenneth Omer's wife. We're going to talk to her later on because we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pray for the woman of God. So... Now, I went back and I, I looked up some stuff. I Googled a lot. I YouTubed a lot. There's not much on the YouTube about the situation, but it's a lot on Google, okay? And so unbeknownst to us, the bishop allegedly, I have to say allegedly, I will always say allegedly until, I, until she comes out. And I know she went on Larry's platform yesterday on Saturday to say her piece, but I don't want to wait to the full interview. But allegedly, she came out, and the, the daughter was born in 2011. And I'm saying that because there's a video dated 2015, and at the time, she was three. I'm sorry. No. Something like that, John. At the time, I think she, maybe she, no, because I think they said she's like 13 or something. Her name is Anastasia. Beautiful girl, too, by the way. But I think they said that she is, she was born in 2011. If I, I might be mistaken, y'all forgive me if I'm wrong. I will come back and correct it. You know how I do. So, let's see. So, apparently, you know, the daughter is about 13 years old right now. And she is asking to have a relationship with her father. According to Stacy. According to Stacy. The daughter has been texting him and they were supposed to meet up. And the bishop did not respond, nor did he show. Ladies and gentlemen, the bishop was a no call, no show for his daughter's uh, outing with her father. Okay. And so, um, why did this all come out? Why does all this come out? And I, I think I skipped the part. <laughs> I'm so excited to get this out, y'all. Why did all this come out? Well, allegedly, allegedly, Stacey said that she now has a new man, okay? And let me tell you something, Chuck. I went and I, you know, y'all know I Googled him, right? Y'all know I, I went to the IG. And if you were just on my IG, on my IG live chat, you will know that I love men. I don't, I don't discriminate, okay? I don't necessarily deal with a lot of Caucasian men, but Italian, Hispanic, you know, um, South, South Asian, you know, Pakistan, India. I like all of that. Okay. I, your girl cocktails will definitely date a man that is not just black. Okay. You know, you know, thank you, honey. I'm trying to do my homework, child. Yeah. But I Googled it. So then I went on the page. So let's just go ahead and see what he's talking about. Child. Now, listen, he ain't the best looking man in the world, but he, he ain't ugly. 
Okay. And so allegedly this all came out because Stacy allegedly she has a new man, but also because the daughter Anastasia has been posting him. But when I went to Anastasia's page, I'm a little confused because her page is private. Now I'm not sure if her page was public before and private now because of what her mother's come out to say, but I'm going to, I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be going back and I'm going to see if Anastasia has reopened up her page so that we can see what she posted. Because how on earth did he see that if the page is, is currently private? That was my question. Okay. But allegedly that's what happened. All right. Allegedly that is what happened. Also, now listen, I didn't really know too much about the bishop child. And again, I found out about him with the preachers, but the church is named City of Refuge Church, Los Angeles. What what type of refuge are they doing over there? You don't know what type of refuge. Seriously. What type of refuge is Bishop giving to the people? Do y'all know? And I, you know, uh, Miss Jackson said she was a little disappointed. Here's the thing: I was, I don't know if I was disappointed. I think I was just more shocked than anything. I don't. Maybe the disappointment has a hit, but I don't. I'm not really connected to these people like that, so I don't know how I could could be disappointed. Outside of, you know, the whole Bishop Jakes thing, which I'm definitely disappointed about because I really, really liked him as a speaker before all of this whole core thing. But as far as Bishop Noel Jones, I don't know how to feel. On one end, I guess I could feel disappointed because that's, well, definitely because, you know, he's not in relationship with the daughter because allegedly he hasn't seen her since, since she was three. That's what the people say. The people say he has not seen her since she was three. But on the other end, it's like, and I'm not taking that for him, of course. God, no, y'all know better than that because we're going to get to the bishop, the other bishop in a minute. But are we really surprised at this point, y'all? But how can he, knowing that he pastors a mega church, he has a mega ministry, not know this is going to come out? And then the people said that he allegedly took the, the, uh, the finances away. The people said that he stopped paying during the 19th. Okay, we're gonna, that's what we're going to call it the 19th. The people say he's not paying during the 19th. So did you not think that at some point in time, this was not going to come out? Did we not think that this was going to happen? I heard something about Texas too. I heard something about Texas today. Because I went, I listened to a lot of a lot of commentary to, to come forward today to talk about this. But my question is, did he not, like, did you not think, and this is for all the pastors and leaders, it, 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 it would behoove you all. That way, y'all could put us out of business, okay? The people are not going to like that we get out of business. But it would behoove y'all. If you have something going on, just come out with it. You know what? In 1995, I decided I was going to shuck and drive a little piece with this little filly that I met at the conference, okay? She had on this nice long dress, down her ankles like one need to bottom, and her, she had a head covering on, but that didn't matter because I thought she was fine. And so what I said to her was, hotel, motel, holiday inn. Right? Like, th that's what we need you to say, Bishop. But apparently, now mind you, 2011, the uh, 2011, the daughter is allegedly born, right? Ten, ten years ago was the preachers. So you go on a show. <laughs> so you went on a show after you had this, this love child, right? You didn't think at some point this is going to happen. This is what the, see, this is, this is the problem with the older church, the older Bishop generation, right? They are still stuck in the nineties. We need y'all to come up. Okay. The woman, the, the young lady, her name is Stacy. We're going to get to her in a few minutes, but she is on the Facebook. Okay. Let's read which actually I have one posted here, right? Hold on. Let's read what she said on the Facebook. We're going to read, we're going to read it together. Read. Okay. I wish I had somebody to read it from me. Let's read it. Let's see what she said. And she said, look, what y'all not gonna do, what you not you what you not gonna do, bitch, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, where I'm at, you're not gonna talk about my child. This was on Saturday. It said the bishop Noel Jones. She listen, this is a letter to the bishop, my daughter's father. Can I just say I honestly had no idea he wanted to be publicly acknowledged as my daughter's father. He is angry. <clears throat> That Anastasia, her daughter, has made public declarations of love for my partner, Alex. 
which obviously is confusing, right? For 10 years, I did not say anything because I thought that's what he wanted. And now he is mad about it. I do not know what to say. I'm confused. Uh, what was I saying? I'm sorry, mostly to my daughter, who I have only wanted to protect. This is very confusing. Y'all pray for me. <clears throat> I have no idea how this was supposed to go. But staying quiet, which I thought ha would help, has not. Wow. I wonder, why is the bishop worried about her and this new man? And then again, the woman is on Facebook. So you don't think she's going to, she's, first of all, they said she was an X Factor. That's how I, I Googled her. That's what happened. That's what popped up. So you didn't think for a second <laughs> that something was going to come up? Are oh, you stuck in the, are you stuck in the 80s and the 90s where people had to do word of mouth? <clears throat> it doesn't stay there anymore, Bishop. <laughs> to all the old school bishops, to all the bishops over the age of 50. And I'm saying 50 because Rocky uh, Bivens, Latasha Scott's husband, with his crazy hind part, obviously didn't realize that you can, women can screen shoot or screen record your messages, screen record your FaceTime. Like we can, I can just hit the button and keep everything and just start scrolling and you can have all the information in 10 minutes. Like they are oblivious to how social media works. And Maybe she didn't know this was going to hit the internet the way that it did, but it did. Okay. And and my, not to mention, she has not denied that he was her father. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I'm frozen. Am I frozen, y'all? Okay. I see myself now. I hate when I can start freezing like that. I apologize, y'all. But he has she did not publicly deny, but she did not confirm, which led people to believe that he was the father. She's gonna say people said that Stevie Wonder was the father. Girl, bye. Okay, what I mean, I know Stevie Wonder would give out a little right hand, but Stevie Wonder though, like, why would you bring him into the equation? If it's Noel Jones, who says Noel Jones? Quite a lot of people want to know what's what he got going on downstairs. You know, that's what I, I wanted to know that. That's what I wanted to know. But I just don't understand why these bishops and pastors that are older, they, they need to be advised correctly. They do. Because <laughs> if they had the right um, advisors like with them or the right PR people, it would be easier for them to navigate social media without any trouble. It would be easier. Bishop, this is what you do. This Bishop, this is what you say. Bishop, look, this came out and this is why I came out. Like, I don't understand who, who's with them. Are there, are there armor bearers just as old as they are? Mm. So anyway, the bishop hasn't seen, allegedly has not seen uh, the daughter since she was three. Okay? And this is all because of a picture. And aren't like... My question is also, are you a little envious of her new boyfriend or are you missing that old thing? Like, I have so many questions. That's why I said, I'm not going to give y'all too much commentary on this because I want to hear what she has to say. Like, is he hitting you up in a DM or in the, by text? Like, what that thing do? Oh, oh, forgot to tell y'all this part. I'm all over the place, but y'all just bear with me. So, allegedly, she said, that she has had a lot of tough conversations with Loretta. Now, y'all remember on the preachers. Let's go back to the preachers, y'all. That's where I really want to start. I remember, I said, gosh, she's a beautiful woman. God, even to this day, Loretta is a fox. Okay, shout out to Loretta. And shout out to Stacey, too. They both foxes. You got to give credit what credit is due. But during the, during the preachers, you know, she thought in her mind, okay, we're going to go on the show together. He got me on the camera. He going to marry me tomorrow. He going to marry me tomorrow. He going to marry me. The bishop waited 10 years, oh, well, what, nine years to marry Loretta. Now, I'm not waiting that long for no man to make up no, to make up his mind, okay? But she said she had some harsh conversations with Loretta. I said, I believe it. Because she does not strike me as a type of woman to play any games or mince any words, okay? 
And she also don't strike me. She strikes me as the type of woman that does not mind fighting over the bishop. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, breaking news, breaking news. If y'all sit up here and tell me that the bishop don't have no good right hand, y'all's a lie. Okay, you a lie. Don't no women go crazy over no man like that unless he putting that thing down and it's big. I said what I said. I did. The bitch, listen, I'm 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 convinced. And if you were on my pre-show on Instagram, I went live on Instagram. I said this. I said, if 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 you are a woman and you've never been with a man who is tall and slender. Or oh, even tall and thick. I listen. Y'all don't sleep on the big ones, okay? Y'all do not sleep on the big boys, but or the big men. But in particular, the tall and skinny ones. I have. A, I told y'all a story last week about a guy that I met on Tinder. Right? I'm an open book, and he was six foot three, and at the time, maybe like two, two twenty, two thirty. Listen, never in my life have I seen such a thing like that. Ever, ever. And I just said, Lord, I apologize in advance. I did. I had to apologize to the Lord. Because I was like, I mean, I was already out of the church at the time, but I was just like, what we're gonna what, what, what we're about to do is not gonna be godly. The bit, let's see how tall Bishop is. Let's see. How tall is Bishop Joan? How tall is Bishop Noel Jones? How tall is he? Oh, he's 73. Let's see. Oh! What'd I say? What? What'd I say? 6'4". Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the bishop is packing that fire. As a matter of fact, you can tell he packing that fire because of the, the amount of women that have been lusting over him over the years. I heard, listen, I heard some stuff today. I said, oh my God. You mean to tell me that they was on that man like that? When he was going through a divorce? Mm, mm, mm. It's also interesting to me, shipping gears, talking about Loretta, talking about uh, Stacy. <coughs> Excuse me. Stacey came forward publicly on, what, Friday night, Saturday, because I think she's in L.A. It's always so interesting to me that, and I'm going to say it's going to be a twofold type of statement, because number one, she did not create this child by herself, right? But I feel like we always get as women, because you carry the, the quote-unquote sin or the quote-unquote burden. I'm not going to call a child a sin or a burden. The act you know, and you're talking about in biblical terms, the act was sinful, but the child is a blessing, right? I'm not, I would, I don't want to call a child a burden, but that's how some church people would identify the child uh, if you are in full-time ministry. And a lot of times they want the woman to confess. And I was watching, uh, shout out to Pyro Media Network. I was watching Kwame today, shout out to him. And he brought up an amazing point. That uh, and I think it was either him or Thais. They were talking about how I think it was Thais how the woman normally has to go before the church and confess their sin. But what about the bishops? I'm gonna give credit where credit is due. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh. Oh. She's like, okay. Oh, uh, thank you for your comment, Mahogany. I appreciate you. Listen, I'm. I, my concern is that <clears throat> we have things backwards. We need to make sure that they are accountable. He needs to make a statement. He should absolutely positively make a statement and say, you know what? I messed up. And I think that it's important that all preachers that get into these type of situations, because we know you're human. Listen, I'm not even, I'm not a judge. I'm not here to put you in heaven or hell, child. I really could care less about who you sleep with. I just told y'all that, you know, Jamal Bryant is in the DMV. Well, he was last night, child. I'm about to tell the business. Jesus, here I go. Here I go. 
He said he brought somebody to the to the service with him last night. Said he brought a woman, child. Said he brought a woman to the. I ain't gonna tell y'all who it is. I saw the woman. I saw. Her. I was not at. Listen, I was not at the the service, but I was there. I was watching. It was online. And they said he brought a woman to the to the service. Now I don't know if it was a woman that love interest or just a friend. We're gonna call her just a friend, okay? But I can guarantee you this. One thing for sure, Jamal gonna get his job. Listen, and I, listen, I ain't mad at this point. You're a single pastor. You should be married, but you're not married. So what, what, what are we going to do at this point? You know? But if you're not out here claiming children, that's a problem, right? Like, if you're not, you know, let it, confessing that this is my child, this is who I love, this is who I value, you know, this is who I help to create, that's a problem for me. I, me too. I, that's a good statement. I I just wish that they would just own it. It's 2023. Times have changed. And if you are out here shucking and jiving, dipping and diving, doing it, like we're going to find out about it. Because a lot of times they don't even wrap it up. They just being out here nasty. Thank you for coming in, Ken. Just being out here, just being, just being reckless and nasty and, and just ghetto. Oof. Just being ghetto. Because why would you not protect yourself and your partners? You don't know who they've been laying there with. We sure as heck don't know who you've been laying there with. The way at the rate that you're going, child, you probably laying there with everybody in in in, in your armor bear. And I don't like putting that stuff on, on the passes, y'all. That's not my thing, but you just never know. You just never know. But why do we not hold them accountable? It takes for people to come up here on YouTube, on social media, to say, "Just, just confess your sins, Sha." We, I think that the body of Christ, the people as a whole, will respect these pastors and these bishops a little bit more if they did that. Now, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fast forward to my last page because I'm done. Now, this is what I thought because, just like the R. Kelly thing, Sha, allegedly. It's like R. Kelly, child. You know, you don't get away with stuff like this without no help. Because again, the bishop is currently 73 years old, John. Okay. He he probably calls this a computer. Okay, he probably calls this a computer. That's what old people do. Let me pull up my computer and, and see who hold let me get my glasses on him. See who see who texted me. That's what they do, right? <clears throat> But they don't do these things. Hey, Cheryl Brown. Hey, girl. They don't do these things without an accomplice. Woo! They don't do it without an accomplice, child. So y'all ready for this? So I'm going to say allegedly, but she said it on, on the show. Allegedly, there is a bishop by the name of Bishop. I wrote it down. Bishop Kenneth Ulmer. And I looked it up because before I came on the line, I looked it up on the YouTube. Because, you know, it's always a always a video somewhere lurking around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, Bishop. Hold on, let me go, because I, I think I Googled it. Bishop Kenneth Omer. And what do you know popped up, chair? A video of Bishop Kenneth Omer. Uh, Bishop, what's his name? Charles Blake, the former uh, leader of the Culture Church. <clears throat> and Bishop Noel Jones on some program. Child, was some janky music, by the way. I was so over it. I was like, oh, can we just get to the point? Y'all want to talk about something? They said they with their legs crossed, being old. Okay? Being old and naive. That's 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 the generation of the men that, that sugar that is now. They sit there, they cross their legs. Oh. Smoking their little cigar, talking their stuff. Bishop Blake talking like this. You know, that's what he do. That's his voice. I don't know what happened. I'm not going to go there. But I saw a video and I said, oh! So allegedly, Stacy said that he told the Bishop Kenneth, I want to make sure I'm clear, that Bishop Omer told her to stay quiet. 
That's what she said. That's what people said. She said that Bishop Omer allegedly, because we don't know if, if Stacy is telling her all 100 accuracy or what. We want to just give her the benefit of the doubt. But she said that Bishop Omer told her to be quiet. Now, this next message is for Lady Omer. Yes, yes, God. Mm -hmm. Y'all thought I was gonna talk about the bishop. Nope. Lady Omer, this this breaking news. If your husband told this single woman to be quiet about her child. What your husband been out here doing? Mm-hmm. Look, the last time I checked, it said birds of a fellow flock, birds of a feather flock together. Uh-huh. Yep. Baby, uh, Bishop, La uh, Lady, uh, uh, Omer, okay? I want you to just, just take a breath, take a breather, and I want you to walk into there Walk into the room. We put on a nice little negligee while you still got it, you know? Walking in a little gingerly and just give him a little back rub, you know? Just <laughs> give him a little back rub. How you doing, Bishop? You know, just butter him up. Even, you know, pay a little extra more attention to the right hand tonight or something, you know? And when you're done, slide it on in there or ask around. Cause I'm gonna tell you some good things. So uh, maybe uh, maybe this is an after dark conversation. This is after dark. But normally, nine times out of ten, when men, when a woman is um, providing a service to the right hand, men are very willing to talk and to comply. Now I don't know if Lady Alma do that, but she might need to know. She might want some answers, and she might have to pull out pull out a stunt tonight and ask him. You know, Bishop. This young lady stated that Noel has a 13-year-old child. And you knew about it. So what you had? Mm-hmm. Listen. My mother and her best friend died months apart from each other. They could not be away from each other. And they both took all their secrets to the grave. Bishop Noel Jones, you don't have the luxury of that today, sir. <laughs> and look, we're not, listen, we just want you to be a good father to your child. Like, you just say, hey, she's my, my daughter. I love her. I'm going to do better as a father. And then do it. Give her the same love you gave your older children, right? But... You gotta, you gotta address it, <laughs> and and this is no longer a secret. No longer a secret. Your daughter is here. She's alive. She's in color, and she needs. She, I mean, but what one thing that Stacy did say, <clears throat> even if he is a friend to her, that's okay, as long as there's some sort of relationship. Personally, I would want my child to have the relationship of her father. Right. But if she feels like if that's OK with her, that's her decision. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. I feel like if he want, if that's what she wants for her child, then that's OK. But in the case that that's not the situation and he can be just a friend. Fine. No one's judging you for, you know. Well, I mean, I'm looking at you sideways because you out here giving out. Right hand without no protection. I am like, why you ain't doing that? But you know how old men are, child. They don't, they don't, they don't believe in that. They don't believe in wrapping it up. They don't believe in condoms and protection. They believe in just whipping it out and, and doing what they do. And it's like, calm that down. Okay. You can't be out here giving out. So if that's the case, how many other children and what does he have out here? And that's another piece. Like I was thinking on Saturday, I'm like, bro, if she came out with this. Imagine if there's more women out here. Imagine how many women are out here holding on to secret children. Like, it's a whole clan of them, by the way, y'all. Y'all already know that. But what about the women who are like, I'm too afraid to come forward? Or he's promised me all this stuff, so I'm going to just keep quiet. Like, there's, it's a lot going on. So what if there's more? Because he obviously don't have, he don't know how to pull out. Bishop said it felt too good. 
but for the late but, but for a lady uh Omer, <clears throat> for your husband to allegedly tell Stacy to just be quiet, just stay quiet. I would be concerned that my husband was out here doing the same thing. Honestly, y'all. Because there's no way that he would, like, a, a real friend would say, you know what, man? You messed up. You had a moment. You're human. You wanted a little cha-cha-cha. You got a little cha-cha-cha. Now, she's pregnant, okay? You have a baby on the way. You got you to gotta own it, bro. That's a real friend. But in the church culture, as we all know, the old school church culture, it's about... Uh, protection. It's all about all about the protection of the pastor and the money. This situation should not have been protected because you didn't protect yourself. If you fail to protect yourself, you fail to be protected, right? So at the end of the day, like once you once you found out she was pregnant, I got to own my stuff. And you all know the church is full of women, okay? They want their own shot. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Do you know how many times the women are going to forgive you for stuff like that? These listen, because they a lot of them are just a lot of them just desperate too, child. They they ain't had no right hand in a long time. They ain't trying to go outside the church to get it, and they want the bishop. That's just to keep it a hundred. Like women love men in power. Women love the bishop, and the bishop could be stone cold ugly, and they still because he's the bishop, they want to be with him. We all know women like that. I know women right now that will find the ugliest man in the church. But because it's a position and a title, they want to be with them. That's just life, okay? That's church culture. So for, I, I, I don't know. I just, I just wish it was different. I just wish it was different. I just feel like they, he should have protected himself. Really, honestly, okay? I really think that he should have protected himself. Let's go ahead and recap so I can get up off of here and go about my night, child. Because on Saturday... I surely was in the house. My my business recovering from trying to be grown on Friday night. Okay. I woke up Saturday, child. Tired, worn out. It was a long work week. And then I, I didn't go right home. You know, it was just it was a long week. And I wake up to this breaking news. And I'm like, y'all, I, I said, I cannot record this right now. I'm not in the mood. I'm not going to give the people my best. I'm still not, actually, because I don't have all the facts. But what we do know is that a woman came forward and said, he, that the bishop who she never denied it, but she never confirmed it back in the day on a couple of interviews that Bishop Noel Jones of the city of refuge church <laughs> is allegedly her daughter's father. And, oh, that's what I meant to tell y'all the daughter's name. Her last name is Jones. Her last name is indeed on her and on her Instagram page. It is Jones. Okay, <clears throat> it's Anastasia R. Jones. It is definitely Jones. I've done. My, I didn't do a lot of research, but yeah, I went on IG. Um, and so apparently, when he was on the pastors, he knew he had a child. He was fully aware. Maybe he thought because of who I am as a as a bishop, I won't be exposed. Well, the jokes on him because. 10 years later from the first taping of the of the preachers of LA, he has now been called out as being the father. But allegedly, according to Stacy, that's what he wanted. So why didn't he come out with it at first? Why didn't he say, you know what, this is my daughter and whom I'm well pleased? <laughs> why didn't he just say that about Anastasia? Uh, and then it said, then I also mentioned that uh, his friend, his confidant and co-laborer in the church, Bishop Omer told uh, Stacy to just stay quiet. Okay. All right. Sidebar. So I have a, I'm not going to mention this friend on this broadcast, but I told y'all that Jamal Bryan, if y'all watching from the church, don't, don't get mad if I say this. Okay. But this is about Jamal Bryan. This is a little Jamal Bryan T. So he was in the DMV last night. I don't know if he's still here. He might be back in um, at Atlanta. Or somewhere else, but he was he's definitely he was definitely there last night. He preached the word of God. That's one thing Jamal can do. He can preach. Jamal can preach the house 
all the way down. Okay. I don't know. I don't, it doesn't say where he is now. Uh, he can preach the house down. He might be reciting scriptures over and over again. People just believe it because it's him. But he can preach. He can hoop. He got that Amy hoop. You know what I mean? <laughs> so the funny thing is, holding each other up is is so wrong. So the funny thing is, I said to my friend, I said, I wonder how many girls and women are gonna come out some, you know, for the service dressed in their best. Baby. All I'm gonna say is this there was one young lady who you could I, I told my friend if 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 she came to my old church like that. Hold on, y'all. Get my pride. I said, if she came to my old church like that, my former pastor. Y'all, this you see Bishop Wooten right here with the with the with the rainbow flag. He right here. I said my pastor with a with a raptor like this. With a raptor, just like this, raptor all the way up, okay? Because you can see the imprint of what she, what the Lord had blessed her down below, front and back. All this for Jamal Bryant, y'all. This is listen, and I'm not gonna say that this the women of God tempted, but they know what they be doing. The women of God know exactly. There was not one ill dressed woman, and the only person that, I, and I was joking by the way when I said this. I said the only person, the only woman that was saved in that church was was the pastor. Oh, she was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, five baptized, and she looked good. Okay, shout out to her. She's a beautiful woman of God. But I said everybody else, child, she was doing. They were doing a lot. Okay, everything was tight. One of them had t uh, chest up, propped up. I mean, I'm talking about they was up here. Okay, sorry, this yeah, I'm doing this one. They was the the chest was up here. Okay. And they were and they was bouncing around. <laughs> and I was home watching, okay? And I said, Good Lord, like, calm down. Then they got the camera all in his face, recording them the whole time he there. Should I just being weird? I said, Oh my God, y'all like have not never seen a celebrity pastor before. Calm down. Okay? You act like you've never seen it before. Calm down. But do you want that right hand? But unbeknownst to them, they said that he had brought somebody with him. I don't, I don't, I don't know what they said, but I, I do know that he allegedly missed his flight. Okay, I am aware. Well, he allegedly missed the flight. I am aware that he allegedly missed it, and we don't know where he went afterwards. But I'm quite sure that the that the good pastor had himself a grand old time here in the DMV because he's home. You know, Maryland is Jamal Bryant's home. The DMV is his home, so. You already know when he get when he get back to Maryland, it's like I can just do what I want to do. You know what I mean? I can shuck a job and be live. Ain't nobody gonna say nothing about me until it's time to come forward with, with another child. Oh Lord have mercy! But anyway, y'all, I hope that this situation with Anasta uh, with uh, Stacy and Anastasia and Bishop Noel and Loretta get resolved quickly because. Nobody wants to see the people fighting, especially when a child is involved. And that's what it boils down to. It's about the children. It's really about her overall well-being. It's about her growing up as a young lady and needing a needing, needing a father. Okay. If yes, she might want to be around him now, but she, but all children, in my personal opinion, and y'all could, you know, disagree. I do feel like children do need, well, they should have both parents. And so if he's here and he's able to see, you know, to see her, spend a little bit of time with her, you know, listen, the church is going to forgive you, child. Them women ain't going nowhere because let, quite of the step, you know how church women are? Come on, y'all. We, we're, we're not new to this. The church women are going to be on the, on the back end trying to still shuck and jive even when he's with Loretta. They don't care. They do not care if he's married. As a matter of fact, to some women, and I know some women like this personally, personally, that do not care. As a matter of fact, it makes them go after the man more when he's married. They say that right. Oh, phew. Because that way he's not attached to them. He can come do what they do and go home to his wife. No commitment. A lot of women are like that. Now, that's not, there are some that are not. 
But there are a group of women that just do not care. They would rather have someone with them and not be so attached and committed to them. They want to make sure that he can go home and, and leave them alone. And so they'd rather have a man that's attached or married. That's just the nature of the game. Some men, they will wear a, wear a ring just to attract that kind of woman. The bishop will be in the pulpit preaching from what uh, Bishop Whitehead say, uh, Proverbs 107. <laughs> from Proverbs 107, which is not a scripture. And knowing that he has one or two women in the same congregation that wants to be with him. And what, what he going to do? Go with Bishop, you know, let's just use Omer for an, an example. Go with Bishop Omer. After service, we're going to go in for a meeting. You're going to know dad going to be, you're going over there to chuck a job with Tina and with Deborah. You know? That's why, y'all, I don't have faith. I, like, at this point, I don't have faith in relationships. Like, do people even honor their vows anymore? Is that important to them anymore? So sad. But anyway, I will keep you all updated. Um, but let's stop protecting these pastors. Let's stop protecting these pastors, y'all. Stop. Y'all stop protecting them because if they can't protect themselves, they don't need protection. If you know you out here shocking a job with no condom, you don't, you obviously did not want to be protected, Bishop. You didn't. And I don't feel bad for you. Just, just be accountable. And, and start sending that money. Because they said that, she, that he stopped sending money during the 19th. Start sending that money again. People did say he lied. <laughs> People said that he might have lied. I don't know. I don't know. They said something about he couldn't afford it and all this and everything. They could turn around and got married in 2022. So you can afford it. Just pay child support. I don't know, Jack. Y'all go ahead and pray for the bishop. Pray for Stacy and Anastasia and uh, and pray that uh, her her partner, Alex, is a good example of a real man for her so that she can have what she needs. And uh, Father, listen, y'all, I love you guys. This was a drive-by broadcast. I did not plan on staying on here long. Y'all say goodnight to Bishop Wooden. Okay, we got the, uh, the rainbow. The rainbow here for the bishop, okay? But y'all say hi to the bishop, and I will see you all on the next broadcast. Listen, y'all be good. Hug somebody, love somebody, and tell them that you love them. See you later. Bye.